Hi folks, Jason Webster here. Welcome to this episode of Inside PTI. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, we are out scouting some cornfields today and kind of seeing something neat, so I wanted to kind of give you an inside look at what we're seeing. This particular trial that we're in is called our Solar Corridor Corn Study. And you're probably thinking, what in the world is our Solar Corridor? Well, we actually, this is narrow row corn. When we planted this, we planted it with a 15 inch row planter. And so we've got treatments out here of a solid stand of 15 inch row corn. But then on some replications out here, we actually shut two rows of the planter off to leave this gap, the solar corridor, if you will, in this cornfield. Now, why are we doing this? We're trying to drive sunlight into this corn to build a bigger factory to, to, to get, you know, drive energy into this ear and drive corn yields higher is what we're trying to do. It's very similar to what we're doing with some of our strip cropping that you've seen in some of the recent Inside PTI videos. Kind of the same concept, except we're not having a short crop in here. We're just leaving an open gap trying to drive yield. So what we do is, in this situation, I've got two 15-inch rows, okay? And then I shut off two 15-inch rows. They turn them back on. So every other uh, set, of, set of 15 inch rows out here in the field. And right now it looks really good. I, I've been watching this all growing season and we got to pollination time and I thought, wow, we're actually throwing some second ears. I don't know that we were able to keep that many second ears out here, but the first ears look really good. Um, I'll go ahead and, and, and break an ear here and kind of show you what we're working with. You know, in this open open gap here, you know, we pollinated really nice. We've got some nice flax to this corn. I'm just gonna go ahead and count these real quick. Two, two, 44, 46. I'm 48 long on this ear. Pretty nice looking ear as far as length goes. Let's bust her in half here. Kind of show you what we're working with. The last ear I had was an 18. I don't think this one's gonna be an 18 though. One, two, three, 15. I got a 16 round, so 16 by 48, I guess it was. Got some nice ears here. This is planted, uh, different populations out here in the field. On average, um, you know, we're looking at 32,000 populations all the way up to near 50,000 out here in the field. So um, 50,000 of these would be, would be awful nice when we calculate that up for yield. All right, so here we are in, in the 15 inch row corn. And again, I showed you the solar corridor where we basically shut off two rows to leave our corridor. Here's where we're looking at our control in this narrow row corn study of solid 15 inch row corn. And so you can see the difference in the canopy here, sunlight interception, you know, we've got more plants, okay, that, that we're trying to, to, to grab sunlight with rather than leave us a, a solar corridor of an open gap. So we're gonna compare this. This is our first year at the PTI farm of having 15 inch row corn at the farm. I've been on a lot of 20 inch row corn in the past. We've had so many people asking, hey, will you test 15 inch row corn? We did just do that. We brought it in and we're evaluating it. And in this solar corridor study, we are comparing 15 inch solid seeding versus leaving, you know, taking the two rows out and comparing it to the solar corridor. So you can kind of see the difference in these 15 inch rows. Lots of biomass out here, lots of vegetation. And if you look up in the top part of the canopy, especially where the sun is right now, you can kind of see that, you know, we've got lots of leaves up here trying to get as much sunlight as we can. We look at the individual um, ears and, you know, the way they're placed out here, and since they're 15 inch rows, we don't have to plant the seeds close together. Now we can widen them out and get a little bit of room to run and put a nice ear on it. Nonetheless, this is our third year of, of doing this. And so this is a, an important year. Academia says that you need three years whether to prove whether something's repeatable or not. So this is our third year. So it's gonna be a lot of fun to harvest this thing. I'll, I'll show you, you know, what this corn looked like earlier in the season. We've done this on 20 inch rows and 15 inch rows. Here's a picture of what you're seeing right now with, with 20 inch rows. So basically we've got two 20 inch rows and then we shut off, okay, we shut off a row and we, we leave a 40 inch gap. Here with this 15 inch row corn, we've shut two rows off and we've got a, we've got a 45 inch gap out here in the field that act as our solar corridor. So I wanna show you some data. I wanna show you, show you some data from 2020 and 2021. I planted this corn at 32,000 up to 44,000 and I've combined the data into one multi-year data set. Let's take a look at some of the data and let's just look at yield. 
really the only major yield detriment was when I planted this solar corridor and took populations down to 32,000. And, and what I like to do with this is say, okay, if I was to plant this in 15 inch row corn and say I just put it all in at 36,000 as one status quo control. I'm using those numbers in comparison to adjusting the population from a low 32 to a high 44. So when I did drop my population down to 32 the last two years, I've been hurt. I've seen some 20 bushel yield losses. Overall though, you know, you know, you know between the two years, I am down about $30 an acre because you got to remember I have a lower seed cost and I'm factoring, factoring in all the economics of this thing. And so on average right now, I'm losing about $30 an acre when I reduce my populations in this solar corridor down to 32,000. However, I increase from 32,000 and I go up to 36,000 and 40,000 and now I'm about break even. I'm about a wash. Okay, I'm teeter-totter in between a negative three and a positive four. I'm right there where it's almost break even. Where I'm doing really well though, is where I increase my populations in this solar corridor up to 44,000, and now I'm actually making a little bit of money. I'm making about $12 an acre as a systematic approach, you know, economically here. And so this is telling me that, you know what, I can do this right now with the two years we've harvested. I can do this and maybe, Take it a step further by now saying, okay, this isn't going to cost me yield. I'm actually making a little bit on this. What else could I use the solar corridor for? And that's where we want to come in with things like cover crops. Maybe I could have a longer growing season. I could get in and plant earlier with my cover crop because of this solar corridor. Why is that going to be important? Well, cover crops, all the warm and fuzzy feelings a person gets because of, you know, um, soil health, the improvements in soil health from that cover crop. I harvest this crop off. I've already got the, the cover crop established. Maybe this could be a great thing. Even better yet, if you're a livestock producer and you want to graze this cover crop after harvest, this could be a, a, a great uh, food ration for you to some degree. So again, there's more money to be had here on a per acre basis in this type of system. And so we're trying to evaluate it. Now, I don't have cover crops in here right now. All I'm trying to do right now is get three years of data of what this solar corridor is gonna do for us. Right now at higher seeding rates, we're doing pretty good with it, okay? So today's inside PTI agronomy tip of the day is solar corridor. We've been, we're doing a lot of work at the PTI farm with strip cropping and now solar corridor work. We found that extra sunlight, increased amounts of sunlight can drive yield. Okay, in this solar corridor system, we're driving additional net return, okay? Additional net profitability by $12 an acre by looking at this type of a system. Now, our next step is to say, well, where can we go with it from here? And that's, as I mentioned before, the cover crops. Can we drive this thing to increase soil health? If you're a livestock producer, can we use this as a, as a feed ration after harvest? So those are the types of things we're working on, but I wanted to give you a first-hand look at this before we ran the combine, show you kind of what this thing looks like. As always, if you've got any questions about anything we've talked about today, feel free to reach out to your local precision planting premier dealer, or you can send me an email at insidepti at precisionplanting.com. That's all the time we have for today. We will see you on the next episode of Inside PTI. Thanks so much for watching.